Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. Well, if you saw the episode the other day, you know that I had to drive out of town in the old Ford truck because I bought the contents of a house, a um, very full house. Problem is we're making the trip back. The truck started to overheat a little bit. Didn't overheat all the way, but it was getting warm. Turns out the radiator in the truck needed to be recorded. They're telling me it's gonna be probably about three or four weeks before they'll be able to get the recore back to me. Um, and that's a problem because I use this truck all the time for picking stuff up and moving things around. And when I do these picks, I need to have a truck. Now I looked into the cost of renting a truck for about a month and it was close to $4,000. And that got me to thinking, what if I could just buy another truck to use for a few weeks until I get this one fixed? But as it turns out, pretty much at the exact same time that my truck is having problems, one of my neighbors in my area said, uh, hey, I got an old truck that I need uh, moved off my property because I'm moving away. Are you interested? And it's actually cheaper for me just to buy this truck <laughs> and drive it um, than it is for me to rent a vehicle. So let me show you what I'm picking up. Back in the tree line here, little pickup truck um, looks to be original paint it was his father-in-law's truck since brand new and it does run and drive look at the chrome on that how gleaming and shiny the chrome is so uh we're gonna try and exhume this truck actually normally i would do a video of me pulling it out and getting a load on a trailer but because it's so close we're actually uh the owner of the property here is just gonna bring them by my house later on and uh i'm gonna get it tidied up and and uh hopefully to be driving this thing as early as next week that's a crazy thought to think it's been sitting here for years and i might be driving it soon um but he said you know if you take the truck from me i really would like it if you took the van and i said well i don't really know if i need a van although it's a camper van which is kind of cool so he said uh buy the truck and you get the van for free so couldn't pass up that deal uh so it was kind of a two for one here i got a early 80s uh square body gm and I've got a uh, 79 Chevy van, both which apparently run and drive uh, for one money. So uh, before too long, we're going to have this thing at home. We'll have a good look at it. And I'm going to try and just polish it up and make it look a little bit better because it's pretty faded and a little forlorn looking here. Um, make it look like a roadworthy vehicle again and uh, get some plates on it next week. Make sure that the brakes and everything are all good. And hopefully I'll be driving that thing out to the... Uh, um, the hoarded house that I bought so I can be hauling stuff back and forth. I'll probably keep the canopy on for a while too, but that's what's going on today. Well, some good news actually. I came back. He said, why don't you come back and we'll see if we can get it running. And guess what I'm driving? I'm driving the truck. Uh, it's got five-year-old gas in it right now, but she started pretty much right up. We just primed the carb and started right up. Engine sounds smooth. <laughs> Uh, so we're just going to stop at his house here so we can get some stuff out of the back and then I'm going to drive this thing home. I never even looked to see how many miles are on this thing. 180,000 kilometers. So what's that, like 120,000 miles or something? It's not super duper rusty. I mean, it's got a little bit in the cab corner, which is normal. Enough to do a fair bit of cleaning on it. I was afraid to use the wipers because it's got its own ecosystem started here. Look at that. It's, it's been sitting there so long it's starting to turn to soil. This will need a good wash later on. But I've got to go back now. Leave the keys there. I've got to go back because we're going to pull that van. <laughs> oh boy. I get to be the one who steers the van while he yanks it out of the field. Uh, his son was going to help him move it over here, but his son had some other time uh, stuff to do. So I get I get the joy of riding in a uh, 
dilapidated camper van. It actually might be kind of fun. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. Well, the very first thing I'm going to do is give this truck a good wash because I tell you what, I don't want to drive it with a whole bunch of uh, debris and stuff all over it. It is, yeah, got to be original paint. It still has the dealer uh, decals on the side of the fender there. I'll see how much I can bring it up. Right now, there is no shine really left in that paint. Uh, we're going to try and work wonders on this. It's got moss and uh, like al algae, not algae. It's got lichen and moss and stuff growing on the side. So uh, yeah, it's been sitting there a bit. It's going to need a good cleaning. Surprise, it started relatively easily. A good old truck. Let's get her cleaned up. See what she looks like. Okay, well, I've washed it off and all these little marks are where I had uh, tree sap and I took a degreaser to it to try and get the tree sap off because I don't want to uh, smudge all over the place when I use a power polisher. I'm using this Miracle uh, Perfect-It rubbing compound from 3M. Stuff worked really good on that MGA project I had. So uh, what I'll do is I'm going to do half the hood with this stuff and we'll see what kind of shine I can get out of it. All right, if you guys are ready for the before and after, here's the before. No shine, sitting out in the sun for ages. And here is the after. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't work for 3M, obviously. <laughs> but that is one heck of a shiny hood. It kind of reminds me of the Fall Guy truck a little bit. I am going to continue working on this hood. Look at how nice that is. That paint is actually pretty decent. I'm going to keep working my way through and uh, see what I can make the rest of it look like. Well, I'm not done by any means, but I've done my first pass of polish on the driver's side. And just look at the difference between that side and the side I have not done. You can see it's like uh, fresh from the field and a decent daily driver over here <laughs> that is pretty impressive actually how much that shine came back i mean geez look at the reflection that is quite the reflection in that paint i didn't think this was ever going to come out i thought a i thought it was too thin but um being baked out in the sun as long as it had been i didn't think it'd come out now i am not sure how this little area here, see how discolored and white it is? I'm gonna tackle that next because that is simply the worst spot probably on all the paint in this whole truck, this whole section here. So I'm gonna tackle the worst bit now and uh, see what a difference I can make. This is what I was working with and that's how it came out. I think I found my new official favorite polish. <laughs> that stuff is awesome, look at that. That's just like, two passes with my power polisher and I didn't like look at how terrible that is that's incredible well now that the outside is looking better I still have to I'll probably paint the rims and shine up the tires a bit I've got to work on the inside I'm gonna take this old blanket out of here there's the rear view mirror Let's see what kind of shape the seats are in so you know what? Seats are fine. Just need a vacuuming. I'll pull those mats out, wash them down, vacuum things up in here, wipe down all the uh, surfaces, and the interior, being just a single cab, will be pretty easy to clean up. Well, with the truck more or less cleaned up and insured and registered, it's a drivable vehicle now, uh, I've decided to do a little bit of cleaning to the van. Not that I'm planning on keeping the van, but I do want to make it clean so that I can try and resell it and uh, later today I'll even see if I can make the thing start <laughs> that'll definitely help with the resale let me show you what it looks like right now so we pulled it around back hiding our shame <laughs> in the backyard this kind of gross old van actually you know with it washed down and the moss off of it it's not terribly rusty even uh, it does have a couple spots of rust I guess kind of like the truck from sitting there uh, this one was last on the road in 2011, not that long ago. 
and I have uh, taken a bunch of debris that was inside out and decided to wash it down. Let me show you. It is very 1979 in here, but surprisingly clean. It's got a little stove and a fridge and a heater, uh, an area up top for a bed. And you can actually stand in here, it's standing height. And uh, those little, those would have had seat cushions on them, which I don't have the cushions for them, but that's okay. Uh, and that makes like a little sitting area. There's a table, which it looks like the top for the table is right there. Might be missing the pole, but uh, I do have the tabletop. And a little bit of debris and garbage here, but the upholstery underneath all this is pretty good. So considering it's a 1979, it's not in terrible shape. So I'm going to uh, let this dry off because I did pressure wash the inside of it, shot it all out the back. Uh, we'll let this dry off during the day and then uh, after it's good and dry, we'll see about making it run. So after a very busy day of trying to resolve my issue with my green truck, my solution of finding another vehicle worked out pretty well. The van that I had up uh, for sale, I posted for sale, sold in a matter of hours. This is going off to a new home. And I should say I paid $3,000 for both vehicles. This one sold for right around 1,500 bucks, $1,450, which means I'm only into the truck for $1,550. So that's really not much to have a uh, good running vehicle. Now I've done a couple things to the truck to make sure it's gonna be roadworthy as I take it out on the highway. Um, put a new heater core in it because the old one was leaking. Not a big deal, it was a $120 fix. New wiper blades, that was about 20 bucks. Um, and it has brand new tires on it, so didn't have to worry about that. I'm trying to think about what else, didn't really need a whole lot. It's generally a very decent vehicle. And uh, with the canopy on the back, that should be perfect for hauling stuff around. So I hope you enjoyed my, uh, <laughs> my adventure today, hauling these vehicles out of the bush. I ended up with a nice 1980s GMC truck uh, for only 1500 bucks. Well, $1,550 was my purchase price. And the best thing about it is it's turnkey ready to go. So with that guys, I'm gonna take my new truck for a spin. Stay tuned for more episodes. And we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.